uh, today I plan to go over that one quiz from uh, the one that you turned in last Saturday, I think, Saturday evening. And then after that, I will finish up uh, whatever previous uh, test that we went over that we that we didn't finish last time. Okay, let's start with this uh, quiz first. This is long time ago. Solution. So divide this rational expression. Uh, to divide rational expression, we multiply by the reciprocal. 3x squared minus 14x plus 8 over x squared minus 16 times the reciprocal x squared plus 8x plus 16 over 6x squared minus x minus 2. And then I factor. If you want to flip and factor at the same time, I believe that's okay. Just be careful. This is x uh, plus 4, make it 12 minus, uh, I'm sorry, minus 4, not plus 4. Minus 4, and then this is minus 2. That will make it negative 14. At the bottom, I have x my, plus 4, x minus 4. On the top right, that's x plus 4, x plus 4. And then the bottom right, that's 3x, x. Uh, if this is minus 2, this will be plus 1. But will that make it? Yes. There. Oh, no, that will not make it. Oh, this is positive x, so I need to change the sign. <clears throat> That's plus 2. This is x minus 1. So what will cancel? x minus 4 will cancel. Uh, x plus 4 will cancel. But 3x minus 2 does not cancel 3x plus 2. So the final answer will be 3x minus 2 x plus 4 over 3x plus 2 x minus 1. That's for number 1. Number 2, I will rewrite that as a complex fraction first. So on the top, that will be 2 plus 5 over x minus 3 over x squared. And then the denominator will be 4 plus 4 over x minus 3 over x squared. Now, and then I multiply the top and the bottom by x squared. I get 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 over 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. And then I factor, hopefully something cancel. We get 2x, x plus 3 minus 1 here. 2x must be 2x hmm. plus 3 minus 1 here. Will that do it? Yeah, that will do it. So 2x minus 1 cancels. We have x plus 3 over 2x plus 3. <clears throat> Number 3, simplify and rewrite in uh, radical notation. Ooh. This seems to be hard. Okay, but I guess what I will do is uh, the fifth root, that's to the power of one fifth. So I will rewrite them in a rational exponent first. Okay, uh, to the power of one fifth, the power of one fifth of x squared times x to the three fourth. Two plus three fourth is. 2 plus 3 fourth is 
8 over 4 plus 3 over 4, that's 11 fourth. So this is x to the 11 fourth to the 1 fifth, which is x to the 11 over 20th, that's the 20th root of x to the 11th. <clears throat> okay, that's for number three. Yeah, so basically I changed that into rational exponent first so that I can simplify easier. And then I change it back into radical notation. That's number three, number four. Slow me down if you think I'm too fast. Number four, I will multiply by the LCD. It's a rational equation. If it is inequality, no, we cannot multiply by the LCD. Multiply by the LCD. So the first term becomes X plus two minus the second term X times X minus two equals to two times x minus two. Distribute and then combine like terms. Uh, it's negative x squared. Let me move everything to the right instead. So I will have positive x squared minus 3x becomes minus x, minus 2 becomes minus 6. And then I factor it. <clears throat> so x equals to 3, that's our x1. and our x2 is negative two. And when I visually check with the denominator, it's okay. So x is not equals to two, right? So both of them are okay. <clears throat> it's number four, number five. Oh, wow. This is kind of nasty, uh, hold on. Let me simplify the guy inside the grouping symbol first. So this is 64 x to the 1 half x to the 1 half to the power of negative 1 third minus this will be uh, 1 over 25 x to the 2 thirds to the power of one half. This is 64 X to the power of negative one third minus this is one over 25 X to the two thirds to the power of one half. Uh, this is one over uh, 64 X to the power of one third minus one over 25 X to the two thirds to the power of one half. So uh, this is cube root, right? Uh, to the power of one third is cube root. So cube root of one is one, cube root of 64 is four, x to the power of one third minus, to the power of one half is square root. So this is one over five. You know, square root of x to the two thirds is uh, two thirds times one half. That's one third, right? So this is x to the one third. Now I need to do LCD. The LCD is 20 blah. So that's 5, 20 X to the one third minus four over 
20 x to the one third. That is one over 20 x to the one third. Now, uh, but that's basically cube root at the bottom. I will multiply the top and the bottom by x to the two thirds. Okay, so the final answer will be, oops. The final answer will be x to the two thirds over 20x. Okay, but to be honest with you, I will be happy enough if you could stop, if you can get this far. Okay, let me say that I give you full three points if you get that far, right? There are three points for that question. So if you go that far, I give you full three points. But then if you can rationalize the denominator, then I give you extra one point. Okay, but the, the answer is supposed to be this one here. The, the answer is supposed to be this one. Okay, but if you get the uh, well, if you didn't, uh, if you go that far instead, then I will give you that one extra point. Okay. That's for number five. Let's go on to the second page. Number six, factorize completely. Uh, when you see, especially if you see factorize completely in my test, especially in my test, I don't really think I ever asked this kind of question in my test though. Uh, but basically every time you factorize, you have to do it completely. Okay, now, but uh, follow the procedure. Always see if we have common factor first or not. Like in this case, we have, I think 876 and 140 we can, uh, has common four, huh? This has four, this has four, and this has four. So I can take common factor four out. And then how many axes I can take out? I can take one X out. And then how many Y's? Y squared y squared oh i can take y squared out okay so then what's left inside is 2x squared minus 19x plus 35 then factor further is 2x and x, 7 and 5, yeah, 7 and 5. So this is minus 5 here, this is minus 7. Okay, that's for number 2. <clears throat> Go on with number, I'm sorry, num number 6. Go on with number 7. That square root of this minus square root of that equals to two. Uh, let me move square root of x plus four to the other side. So two minus square root of, actually plus square root of x plus four. And then I square both sides. So I get on the left hand side, it becomes only three X without radical. The right hand side is two plus square root of X plus four squared, which will give us four plus four square root of X plus four plus X plus four. So 3x equals to x plus 8 plus 4 square root of x plus 4. Subtract by x is 2. Subtract by 8 minus 8 here equals to 4 square root of 
x plus 4. Now, you can divide by 4 here. You can also square both sides right away, okay, which I plan to do. But if you think about it, you can at least reduce by 2. You can at least reduce by two and then square both sides. I will just square both sides. I will just square both sides, but uh, expect that the numbers that I get may be uh, have, uh, higher or greater than uh, it should be. But we can reduce that. So I square both sides again here. So I get two uh, X minus eight being squared. And I have on the right hand side four square root of X plus four squared. Now on the left hand side I get 4x squared minus 32x plus 64 equals to uh, 16 times x plus 4. Hey, at least the 64 cancels. Okay, Let's subtract by 60, support, uh, sub, subtract by 16 X, I get four X squared minus uh, 48 X equals to zero. Ah, then I can factor four X. Right, so X minus 12 equals to zero. So X one equals to zero x2 equals to 12. But I need to do the checking though, that's the thing. Okay, I need to do the checking. So check for x1 equals to zero, square root of three times zero minus square root of zero plus four is it equals to uh, what? Is it equals to two? that square root of zero is zero minus square root of four is two, is it equals to two, negative two is not equals to two. So x equals zero is not a solution. It's just extraneous solution. Uh, x two equals to 12 when we check square root of three times 12 minus square root of 12 plus four, is it equals to two, Square root of 36 is six, square root of 16 is four, is six minus four is it equals to two? That's a check. So X equals to 12. <clears throat> okay, now that's for this number seven. Last question, number eight. Oh, this is quadratic like equation, huh? because the variable part here is the square of the variable part here and the other part is just constant. So I will say let x equals to, oh, no, not x, uh, u maybe, or y, or t, uh, u equals to x to the power of one third. So the first term two times x to the two thirds becomes two times u squared plus 13u minus seven equals zero. Uh, two u uh, minus one, u plus seven equals zero. So u equals to one half, u equals to negative seven. Now plug that in, uh, x to the one third is one half, so x equals to, I take it to the power of three, right? So x1 is one eighth, x to the one third equals to negative seven, so x2 is negative seven cubed. I don't know what's that, but you can just use your calculator. Yeah, I use my calculator, it's negative number. Uh, seven cubies, 343. So negative 343. Okay, now that's the solution for our last quiz. And I will post that on our discussion board later on and also on our uh, uh, the assignment board 
for that quiz. <clears throat> okay, uh, I will finish up the rest of the questions that we didn't do from what we attempt in the last one week or maybe one and a half week, huh? Okay, so fall 19, fall 19, uh, this is the last one we attempt to do. Uh, we did it last, uh, two days ago. Okay, let's see which part we didn't do. Oh, okay, we didn't do different quotient. But we can do that already, right? We actually went over, we have that in the lesson and we went over this uh, in the lec lecture yesterday. So, uh, what is the difference quotient of this function? Now, the fx, f of x plus h is square root of x plus h minus four. So the difference quotient, the difference quotient will be on the top left, square root of x plus h minus four, make sure that the, the roof is covering up to minus four, minus square root of x minus four, over h. Now, how to simplify this? We will multiply by the conjugate. Okay. Notice that. Notice that. Uh, how do we know that we cannot stop there? Well, uh, to know that you cannot stop there, try when h equals to zero. What happened? If you put h equals to zero and you get zero over zero, then you cannot stop there. You have to go on. Okay. If the h is zero and you end up with zero, zero, means you cannot stop there, you have to go on. Now, then what we can do here is we will rationalize the numerator, multiply by square root of x plus h minus four plus square root of x minus four. Okay, likewise at the bottom, I do the same. Now, so that we can take advantage of uh, difference of squares on the numerator. Okay, then on the numerator, blah minus blah times blah plus blah is blah squared minus blah squared. Okay. Over the denominator, we get h times x plus h minus four plus square root of x minus four. Now on the top, x cancels, negative four cancels. So I have only h left. At the bottom, I copy paste. And then you see the h cancels, right? You see the h cancels. So uh, we get, let me shift that a little bit here. So we have one over square root of x plus h minus four minus square root of x minus four. That's our final answer. Okay, let's go on. Number seven, determine whether the function fx is even or odd or neither. Now to decide, we need to check what happened to f negative x. Okay, if f negative x equals to fx, then it is even. If f negative x equals to negative fx, then it is odd. So f negative f negative x equals to, I replace dx by negative x, and then simplify them. On the top, when I simplify, I get 3x to the fourth minus 2. At the bottom, I have negative x cubed plus 6x. Uh, it doesn't look like the, the original function, huh? The numerator already the same. The numerator's already, or, oh, oh, not that one. Uh, 
the numerator here already the same, okay? But the denominator are not the same. Okay, so they are not exactly the same. Uh, what can we do? Oh, you know what? We can factor the negative from the denominator, right? Let's factor the negative from the denominator. So on the top, I get three X to the fourth minus two is the same. The bottom, however, I will uh, factor the negative out. Oh, okay, so that's actually equals to negative of three X to the fourth minus two over X cubed minus six X. Now that implies this is equals to negative FX, right? Okay, so F negative X is equals to negative FX. That implies FX is fx is odd. And then part B, use the result from part A to conclude whether the function is symmetric with respect to x axis, y axis, origin or non. Well, if the function is an odd function, then it has origin symmetry. Okay, now uh, yesterday in class, I mentioned something uh, that I won't mention there anymore. I challenged the class to find a function. Is there a function that is even n odd? at the same time. Okay. At first I thought about it. I have a slight, some, some little hard time until I realized one thing. Hey, you know what? Uh, let's attack that problem this way. If that fx, let fx, if, they, if you have such function is even and odd. Uh, because it's even, then if it is even, then f negative x equals to fx, right? If it is odd, then f negative x equals to negative fx, right? Okay, now then let me move this to the left so that it's still within the page. Now, if that's the case, then it means uh, fx, which is f negative x, is the same to negative fx, right? fx is equal to negative fx. But this means two fx equals to zero and therefore fx equals to zero. So is there any function that is even and odd at the same time? Yes, the constant function y equals to zero. So if we take a look, the constant function y equals to zero, okay, that's y equals to zero. That's uh, basically the x-axis. Notice that this x-axis here, is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, right? You can fold that in the middle and they still match. On the other hand, it also have origin symmetry, which is that if you rotate 180 degrees, it will still meet the original function, the original graph. Okay, so if there's a question later on, somebody asks, I will not ask this though, uh, if somebody ever asks, oh, is there a function that is even and odd? Is it, it's like when we talk about numbers, if the number is even, it won't be odd. If a number is odd, it won't be even. Okay, but now we can find uh, a function that is odd and even. So uh, with this say then the term even and odd, just terminology for the function. 
Okay, it's just the terminology. Of course, uh, when we go further later on into, I think chapter three, chapter three or chapter four, then we will see more reason why you call that even, why you call that odd. Okay, now, uh, but sometime in the past, somebody asked me this question, Thomas, uh, when you say even or odd, which means it has uh, origin and y-axis symmetry, uh, don't you think a circle centered at origin actually has no symmetry? Okay, a circle has y-axis symmetry. It also has origin symmetry, right? But then why you don't find this as your solution? Like the function is this. So it's already even, it's already odd. Uh -uh, no, slow down, slow down, slow down. It does have y-axis symmetry. It does have origin symmetry. In fact, once it has both of those symmetry, then it must have uh, x-axis symmetry also. Like all the, uh, this three symmetry that we have, let me go back a little bit. This three symmetry that we have, if you have two of them, then you must have the third one. You cannot have only two of them. No, it won't happen. It won't happen. Either you have all three of them or only one of them or none of them, but we never have two of them. Okay, so uh, that circle, does it have x-axis symmetry? Yes, y-axis symmetry? Yes, uh, origin symmetry? Yes. So why can't you call that even or odd? Even and odd. Well, the reason is even and odd are always in the context of a function. The thing is a circle is not a function because it does not satisfy a vertical line test. Okay, I hope that answered the question. So why why can't I say that a circle center at origin is an even or an odd, Thomas, because they have the symmetry already. Right? They have the symmetry, but it's not a function. Okay, that's the reason. Now that's for that question number seven. Let's see more if there's anything else we didn't, we have not done. Oh, this one here. So number nine, part B, how about the range? How about the range? Uh, then we need to imagine how the graph actually moves. Okay, how the graph actually moves. The original function is square root of x, right? Now, then I will change that x becomes x plus four, which means I've moved four units to the left. Okay, and then replace the x by negative x. That's how we get that four minus x, but replacing x by negative x can uh, reflect the function with respect to the y-axis. Okay, and then uh, how about the negative two square root of that? Well, that will flip that upside down and stretch vertically by factor of two. So it now looks like I need more space. Let me do it here. Uh, then it this now looks like this. Okay. Now uh, we add three, right? This is, uh, uh, this is negative two square root of my negative x plus four, right? Now, and then I add three, which basically move the graph three units up. So I move the graph three units up. Now the graph looks like this approximately. Okay. But we know then the top, the range, original from negative infinity to zero, now from negative infinity to three. Okay, now that's, that's if you look at the graph, that's if you look at the graph. Now, uh, another way to look at that is this, another way to look at that is this, it's kind of like too crowded here, I know. So. Uh, square root of four minus x, square root of blah, has the range at least zero. So 
when you make it negative square root of blah, multiply both sides by negative number, then it must be less than zero. Right? Now multiply both sides by two, negative two square root of blah, it will still be less than equals to zero. When you add three, when you add three, when I add three, then the other side I add three also. That's three plus zero. So three minus two square root of four minus x is always less than equals to three. Okay. Now then that tells us that, let me raise this, that the range is, that the range is from negative infinity up to three. Okay, so if I try to explain it without uh, writing, without graphing, the square root of blah is at least zero. So negative square root of blah must be at most zero. Right? Okay, and then uh, negative two square root of blah also at no zero. Now you add three to both sides of the inequality, then you get this expression or this inequality here, which implies that the range is at most three. Okay, now you should try to sketch this though. You should try to sketch this. Uh, let's sketch that right now. Let me sketch that right now. Uh, let me borrow the place down here. Uh, number nine. Let me borrow a graphing paper from here. Give me a sec. So let me use this as I my graphing paper. And paste that here. Hmm. Oops. That's way too big. Okay, we know that the vertex is uh, what the vertex is four comma three upside down. Let me write down the formula, uh, the function first. The function is fx is equal to fx is equal to uh, 3 minus 2 square root of 4 minus x right and we say that we start from square root of x we move four units to the left And then we reflect with respect to the x, uh, re with respect to the y axis. Now it becomes like this. And then we make it upside down, negative square root of four minus x makes it like this. Okay, this is four comma zero. And then stretch by factor of two so stretch vertically by factor of two, so it gets further down like that, but still the vertex, the starting point is four comma zero. And then you up three. So the coordinate, uh, the vertex coordinate right now is four comma three. Okay, now supposed to be go down one, two, go to the left one, we go down two instead because of that negative two go down two, left one, go down four, left four, go down 
three times two becomes go down six left nine. That's what the graph look like. Okay, that's what the graph look like. And the intersection here, I think that's, it's not exactly two, it's two point something. Let's see what coordinate is that. I think that's two point something. The X intercept, oh no, it's one point something. That's seven over four. That's seven over four, my bad. So I can fix that a little bit. Okay. So that's seven over four. So it's here supposed to be, right? Okay, it's here supposed to be. So then I draw the line, let those coordinates meet. So approximately that's what the graph look like. Okay, where the Y intercept is zero negative one, the X intercept is seven four comma zero the vertex or the starting point is four comma three okay now uh remember i post the graphing paper file somewhere in my discussion you can also find it in the file folder so if you happen to not to have a printer when when uh when you have a test at least print this graphing paper Okay, at least print this graphing paper. Then if you have question with graphing, you just say, oh, for number nine, this is the, the graph, like that. Okay, now, if you don't have graphing paper, then this is what you need to do. Well, this is the worst case. If you have no graphing paper, How do you graph that? Then you need to uh, denote and identify those important coordinates. Okay, so for example, for example, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So you will say, oh, you know what? My vertex is a uh, four comma three. So you try to make it evenly scale four comma three, but I need you to uh, plot, uh, write down the coordinate four comma three. And then two units down go one to the left. That's another important coordinates, right? Now I need you to also write the coordinate for that three comma one. And then down four to the left four, that's zero comma negative one down six to the left nine. That's negative five comma negative three. That's the coordinate, right? And then this is uh, the y, the X intercept seven four comma zero, right? So you, plot, uh, you write down the coordinate of those important uh, coordinates, important points, then you draw the line. Okay, what I want to say is if you don't have graphing paper, then you need to name it. You need to name the coordinate. Okay, don't just do it this way. Don't just do it this way. Ah, oh, Thomas will understand anyway. So you kind of like uh, do this, like this, and then just like this, and then bubble it, and then you bubble it, and then you bubble it like that. No, it's, I need more than that. Okay, I need more than that. You need to put the name of those coordinates. Okay, but Thomas, when I have the grid, I don't need to put the name. Well, because you have the grid. If you already have the grid, it, even if I don't write this down, you can tell that's four comma three, right? Because I already have the grid. If I don't, if you don't have the grid, well, what do you know? What can you tell about this? Right? Nothing. Okay, so make sure that you write the name of that coordinate. Okay, right, you need, then you need to write the uh, coordinates of important points.
the one I mark in yellow. Okay, and this one is not enough. It's not only not enough, very not enough. Very not enough. Because you only tell me, okay, the, the final shape will look like this, but there's no details. If this question is like five points, for example, then I will give you at most two points. Uh, that's very high. Maybe only one point. Maybe only one point. Okay. Yeah. If you don't name the position, right? If you don't name the coordinates, then I may just give you very likely I give you only one point for these five point questions. If this question were five point, I give you only one point for doing the one I circle in green here. Okay. I need you to name the coordinates. That's for uh, this number nine. Let's go on to number 10. Now uh, we did the X intercept and Y intercept already. Now, how about the axis of symmetry? Uh, yesterday I showed you here how to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, actually two days ago and in the question and answer yesterday, I also show you how to these two different methods. Uh, and then from there we get the vertex, right? From there we get the vertex. Now beside using uh, plug that negative two into the function to find the y component of the vertex, we can also do the following. Uh, the y component of the vertex is equal to negative d over 4a. Okay, now the discriminant is, uh, you can count the discriminant aside. So discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So that's 4 plus 8, that's 12. Okay, now then this is negative 12 over 4a. So that's negative 12 over negative two, that's positive six. So that's another way to find the y component of the vertex. Okay, now once we have the vertex, oh, what's, uh, once we have the vertex, then what is the range? Uh, because the, rare, the, the a, the leading coefficient is negative, is negative one half, right? The leading coefficient is negative one half means the graph is upside down. Okay. So the range will be, will have a maximum. The range will be from negative infinity up to the Y component of the vertex. Now, how about FX in standard form? Uh, the A is negative one half. So FX equals to negative one half x minus h, which is negative two, so minus negative two squared plus six. That's what the function in standard form. Again, how do I get these? How do I get these? I got that from here. Okay. Just like if you have the quadratic function in standard form, you can find the vertex. If you have the vertex, you can find the, the function, quadratic function in standard form. Now using that, let's sketch the graph. The vertex is negative 2 comma 6, negative 2 comma 6, that's the vertex. Okay, this is the axis of symmetry, x equals to negative two. Okay, now then uh, we do that work. When I move left, right one unit, I supposed to go up one, but leading coefficient negative one half, I go down one half left, right, Two units supposed to go up four, multiply by negative one half, down two. Three units to the left, right, supposed to go up nine, 
multiply by negative one half becomes down four and a half. Right? Okay. So three squared, that's equals to nine, right? Now multiply that by negative one half. That tells us that we go down uh, nine over two, which is 4.5. Okay, if we go left, right, four units, you square it, that's 16, multiply by negative one half. It means we go down by eight. When I go from the vertex, go four units to the right, I go down by eight and it happens left, right. Now, what happened if I go left, right, five units? That's 25, supposed to go up 25, but multiply by negative one half, that gives us negative 12.5. Means if I go to the left, right, five units, I will go down 12 and a half, six here, another six and a half. So the graph looks like this. Okay, and your dub, your bubble, make it thick enough. Okay, your bubble, make it thick enough. And I, of course, as accurate as, as you can. Okay, that's what the graph looked like. Now, from here we see the x intercepts are, uh, one of them is uh, between one and two comma zero, and the other one is between negative five and negative six comma zero. Okay, now we had the x intercept up, up here, right? Now, when you use calculator to do the approximation, uh, then you will get the decimal to help us plotting that more accurately. Okay, but visually speaking, visually speaking, uh, this is two minus two radical three comma zero. I'm sorry, that's negative two minus two radical three. And this one is negative two plus two radical three comma zero. Okay, let me erase this. Not supposed to be part of our work. You can do it on your scratch paper though. Oh. Just out of curiosity, out of curiosity. So using that graph, can you find the following? Uh, use this graph to solve. negative one half x squared minus two x uh, plus four less than equals to zero. And what will your solution be? Now you don't need to do everything all over again. No need, no need. Why? Because from that graph, you already see which part is above zero, which part is below zero. The one above zero is this. That's the one above zero. This is the one below zero. Yeah, this is the one below zero. Okay, as if, as if, if we do the sine graph, if we do the sine graph, the negative two minus two radical three is one of the critical number. Negative two plus two radical three is another critical numbers. And the design graph will be the one above is positive. The one below is negative. Okay, that's what it means actually. Okay, you don't even need to do the sign graph. I just try to relate that to what we have, the sign graph we have. Okay, sign graph just to help us to see what part of that graph is above and what part of that graph is below the x-axis. But if you already have the full graph, a very precise graph, you can just use that. Okay, and this basically means, that basically means which part is below or at x-axis. 
Okay, so the solution will be negative infinity up to negative two minus two radical three bracket union. I use bracket because we include zero. Negative two plus two radical three comma zero. Okay, now that's for this uh, test one from fall 19. I actually went over some problems, uh, some follow-up question that's not here, right? Okay, like this number nine here is not part of the question, but I answered that anyway. Now let's go on to spring 17. Spring 17, finish up the problems we have not done last time. So is done on uh, March the 10th. So let's see which part is not done yet here. We're done with the second page. Oh, number four. Find the difference quotient of square root of x minus three. So f of x plus h is square root of x plus h minus 3, such that the difference quotient of that function will be f of x plus h minus square root of x minus 3, f plus h minus 3 minus square root of x minus 3 over h. Now, uh, let me ask you to do this problem. Yeah, let me ask you to do this problem. Continue with this. Okay, continue with this. Uh, multiply by the conjugate, right? But I need you to work it out. Multiply by the conjugate, because if you replace h by 0, you get 0 over 0. So I need to massage that. and see what happened from there. Okay, simplify a lot more. Okay, and I think you can also do this one. Let me reduce the view to 110%. Okay, uh, number five also. Determine whether the function is even or odd. Number four should take you another three or four minutes. Number five, another three or four minutes. So determine if it is even or odd and then see what kind of symmetry it has. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's say I give you a total of seven or eight minutes from here. Seven or eight minutes plus 10 minutes break. So let's come back at, let's come back at uh, 10 plus 17, 48, 10, 48. Okay, 10, 48, then we come back here and then we work this number four and five out. Uh, let me see, beside these two questions, is there anything else? Oh yeah, this, uh, we have quadratic to work on. Uh, we have radical to work on later on number nine and oh yeah we still have some okay yeah, we have quite a lot on in this section to work on in this test to still continue working but yes uh, you take 10 minutes break and then come back work on this or you work on this first and then take 10 minutes break okay so we multiply by the conjugate so we have the difference of the squares of those square roots. So I get on the denominator square root of h times square root of x plus h minus 3 plus square root of x minus 3. On the top, the x cancel the negative three cancels, so I have only h over 
h times that. And the h cancels, so we are left with 1 over square root of x plus h minus 3 plus square root of x minus 3. Okay, so that's for number 4. <clears throat> number 5, you have this function fx equals to 4x cubed plus 5x divided by square root of 3 plus x to the fourth. So to determine if it is even or odd or neither, I take a look at f negative x. Okay, and the plan is this. If we have f negative x equals to fx, then that's even function. If f negative x is negative fx, then it is odd function. Okay, that's the rule of thumb. Now then I replace the x by negative x. And then simplify, I get negative 4x cubed minus 5x over square root of 3 plus x to the fourth. So you notice that the denominator already the same. However, the numerator is the opposite. Right, so let's factor the negative out from the top. Okay, we factor the negative out from the top. That's negative of 4x cubed plus 5x big over square root of 3 plus x to the fourth. But that is equal to negative fx, right? So you see f negative x equals to fx, uh, equals to negative fx. So if that's the case, fx is odd. Okay, now because fx is odd, then uh, the graph has, it has origin symmetry. Okay, that's for number five. I think the rest of this page already done. Let's go on number seven. We have that quadratic function. And two days ago, we did the x and the y intercepts already, or maybe a couple of days ago, maybe last week. Now let's find the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, let me just use formula. Okay, I will just use formula. So x equals to negative b over 2a. That's three over negative one, that's negative three. So the equation of the axis of symmetry x equals to negative three. How about the vertex? I will plug that negative three into the function to find the y component of the vertex. So that's negative one half times nine plus nine minus five half. That's negative nine over two plus nine plus uh, minus five half. Uh, that's negative 14 over two minus, uh, plus nine. That's negative seven over nine uh, plus nine. That's positive two. Okay, so the vertex is negative three comma two. Now, once we know the vertex, we know the standard form, fx equals to the leading coefficient negative one half times x plus three squared plus two. Quite straightforward, right?
Okay, now how to sketch the graph? The vertex is negative three comma two. The vertex is negative three comma two. Let me use red, uh, very thick blue color, negative three comma two. So it's here. And because the leading coefficient is negative one half, left right one unit supposed to go up one multiplied by a negative one half is half here. Okay, so one squared is one multiplied by negative one half. It tells us we go down one. If we go two units to the left right, supposed to go up four, but because of the negative one half, we go down two instead. So from the vertex, go two units to the right will bring us bring us down two. Okay, three units to the left right supposed to go up nine, but because of the negative one half, we go down four point five instead. Okay, so three uh three four point five. So the y intercept is zero negative two point five negative five half. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, now if we go four units to the left, right, supposed to go up 16, but because of the negative one half, we go down eight instead. So go four units to the right, go down eight, two, and then another six is here. Okay, so the graph of that parabola looks like this. Okay. Let me just leave it here to give you a hint. How do you get the other coordinates from the vertex? Okay, the movement. Let's go on. Next. Number eight, that's composition of function. This will be in your test two for A and B. Okay, this will be in your test two. I think we will go over this uh, very likely in class. We will go over this very likely on Tuesday. Yeah, composition function. So our lesson next week is already uh, actually starting from tomorrow. Our lesson tomorrow starting from tomorrow. Oh, maybe not, huh? Next week. The lesson starting from next week is actually for test two already. Okay, your test one will be for you will be two weeks from now. So your test one for you will be two weeks from now on the 24th, I believe. Let me check the syllabus just in case I get it wrong. Give me a second. Syllabus. So when is your test one? Yeah, your test one for Monday, Wednesday is on 24th. Tuesday, Thursday will be on the 25th. Yeah, Tuesday, Thursday will be on the 25th. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I see it from the syllabus. I will give you guys the direction on how the quiz will, the test will be done. Uh, I basically post the instruction for test one under the assignment. Yeah, I will post the instruction for test one under the assignment. So in the, the assignment, you will see the instruction uh, a test, right? And then you have test one. And you click on that one, you will see the instruction. Okay, let's go back to this. Uh, part C, however, we still can graph this though. In fact, we did we did this graph already earlier. The okay, square root of four minus X, what will that look like? Okay, we start from square root of X. You know what that looks like, right? You know, it looks like this. And then replace X by X plus four. That basically move four units to the left and then reflect when you replace x by negative x, replace x by negative x, you basically reflect that with respect to 
the y-axis. Okay, so it was negative four comma zero here, right? Now it becomes four comma zero. Now go up one left one, go up two left four, go up three left nine. So the graph actually looks like this. Okay. That's for number eight. Number nine. Oh, word problems. Yeah, word problems. Let X be the length of a rectangle whose perimeter is 30. Let's sketch that first. So you have a rectangle, okay? You have length and width. Okay, now the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width. Now the length is x. The length is x. The perimeter is 30. So 2, 30 equals to 2x plus twice w. Now express the width of the rectangle in terms of x. So twice the width is equal to 30 minus 2x. Therefore, the width is, you divide by 2, right? So the width is divided by 2, 30 over 2x divided by 2. That's 15 minus x. Is it right? Now, write the area of the rectangle as function of x. So the area of that rectangle is length times width. Okay, now as a function of x, so I write that the parenthesis x, right? Okay, means it's a function of x, is the length times width. What is the length in terms of x? That's x, okay. What is the width in terms of x? That's 15 minus x. And actually we are done. Right. Uh, you can distribute that, right? That's negative x squared plus 15x to make it into general form, okay? And that will be helpful for us to do part C. At what value of x will the rectangle reach the maximum area? Find the x that has the maximum area. Then x is maximum. You see, that's opens down, right? This parabola opens down. This area function gives you a parabola, okay? It opens down, so it has maximum value. Now, x maximum is negative b over 2a. Long time no c. Okay, so that's negative 15 over 2 times negative 1. That's 7.5, 15 over 2, which is 7.5. How about the y maximum? Y maximum is either you plug that 7.5 in, which I think I that's what I will do. Okay, area maximum. So the y, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Y maximum is the area when x reach give us the maximum. Okay, that's 7.5 times 15 minus 7.5. That is actually 7.5 squared. Then I use my calculator. I get 56.25, that's maximum area. In other words, in other words, if you have any rectangle, any rectangle, okay, any rectangle, as long as the perimeter is 30, as long as the perimeter of that rectangle is 30, then the area, maximum area must be 56.25. That's the maximum. Okay, if somebody tell you, oh, I have a rectangle, the perimeter is 30, but the area is 100, you will say BS right away, you must be lying. No way, because if the perimeter is 30, then the area maximum must be 56.25. Cannot be more than that. Okay, 
<clears throat> we basically, in part C, we basically take advantage of our knowledge about quadratic function. If you have quadratic function, then the value where the function is maximum is known by using this uh, axis of symmetry formula. Okay, that's for number nine. Let's go on to number 10. Number 10 is piecewise defined function, which I will go over actually yesterday in class, but uh, it's actually not too hard to do. Piecewise defined function is a function that is defined piece by piece. So when x is less than zero, we will use this function. Okay, when x is between zero to three, we will use this function. When x is greater than three, we will use this function. Okay, so for less than zero, when x is less than zero, it means it is in this interval. When it is in this interval, we will use that x plus two squared. x plus two squared looks like what? x plus two squared is a parabola. Okay, uh, x squared, but you move two units to the left, right? So the parabola which look like this. Hold on, let me enlarge this back. The parabola will look like this. Okay, but right at right at x equals to zero, right at x equals to zero, I need to put open circle. Why? Well, because this only define up to uh, up to x less than zero. Okay, now starting from x equals to zero, starting from x equals zero up to three, not including three, we will use negative two x plus three. Negative two x plus three. Now, how to graph negative two x plus three? <clears throat> negative two x plus three, the y-intercept is zero comma three, but the slope is negative two. Okay. Oh, to help visualize that better, that's what the graph look like. Okay, now the yellow one is here. It's from negative infinity up to not including x equals to zero. And then uh, the second piece from negative C, uh, from zero, including zero, up to less than three. Okay, now then the last one, let me use green color. X minus one means the y-intercept zero negative one, the slope is one. So it's here, 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 here. Okay, so that's the graph, but we start from x equals to three. So this is the graph. Okay, that's the graph. I use this to just help us doing the sketch. Okay, that's for number 10, the piecewise defined function. So you basically graph, for example, you basically graph the graph of x plus two squared, but then you limit your graph only up to, uh, only for x less than zero. Okay, so the graph supposed to look like this, right? Supposed to look like that. Okay, but you then erase the part that is not in that domain. 
So it's just like that. It's just like that. Okay, now using that number 10, using that number 10, can we answer this question? Let me make it a bit smaller. As X approaching three from the left-hand side. So when you approach three from the left-hand side, okay, when X approach three from the left-hand side, what is the value of Y approaching? When you approach X from equals to three from the left-hand side. So this is our X equals to three here. Okay, and you approach that from the left-hand side. Now take a look, the Y value is approaching what? Approaching negative three, right? Okay, it's approaching negative three. So it approached negative three. How about when we approach x equals zero, that's x equals to zero, uh, from the negative side, from the left-hand side. When you approach x equals to zero from the left-hand side, what is the y value approaching? From that graph, it will approach four. Now, how about the value of the function when x goes to negative infinity? When you go very far to the left, what is the value of the function approaching? It goes to infinity, right? Very far up. How about when you approach three again, but this time you approach from the right-hand side? When you approach three from the right hand side, the y value will be approaching this y. What is that y? Two, right? It's approaching two. So the last question here is actually more on, do you know how to read the graph? Okay, the left hand limit, right hand limit, Limit x goes to infinity, limit x goes to negative infinity, what happened to the value of the function? Okay, oh, by the way, when you graph that, you don't need to highlight the, the graph here though. So you don't need this. Okay, you don't need to highlight that. I highlighted there so that you know which section I was, which piece I was working on, but you don't, you don't need to. I mean, you can, but you don't want to highlight that with something so thick that uh, it disturbed the original graph. Okay. Yeah, so that's what the graph supposed to look like. Uh, by the way, by the way, as X approaching zero from the right hand side, not from the left, the FX will be approaching Three. So you see when you approach that from left hand side, approaching zero from left hand side, the value of the function approach four. But if you approach from the right hand side, the value of the function approach three. Okay. Now let's go on with number 11, uh, number 12. Number 12 is something I have done, I believe last week. Yeah, we did this last week. Basically, the question is to graph this function. To graph this function. Okay. And for that to happen, we did the critical numbers and concert, cons, uh, work on that case by case. And then once we get simplify case by case, we end up with this function. It's a piecewise defined function. Okay, so when x is greater or equals to two, when x is greater or equals to two, 
I will graph five. Y equals to five. It's five. When X is between negative three up to two, negative three up to two, but not including two, it will be two X plus one. It will be two X plus one. So the Y intercept is one, the slope is two. Oh, that's what it looks like. And then, and then when X is, uh, let me use this one. Yeah, when X is less than negative three, when X is less than negative three, uh, the Y value is a constant negative five. So that's what it looks like. Okay. I know you don't expect to see this. I know you don't expect to see this like in your cal uh, uh, cal pre-calculus class, but you're supposed to go up to this level though. Okay, you're supposed to go up to this level. Now, when I gave this question that semester, I remember uh, I think only two students get it right. Okay, and uh, to be more precise, only one student get it right by showing proper work and the other students get it partially right the work is nearly okay, but then the graph is nearly okay also. But uh, he make little mistake here and there. Okay, then since then, I never asked this question anymore in test one. I asked this question again in other, in other, in other tests or in their future tests in the future semester, but I didn't ask this question anymore in test one. Now, so will I ask this question in your test one? I don't know. I don't think so. To be honest with you, I don't think so. Okay, I have other more important questions to ask in your test one. Okay, uh, but it's still something nice to know. It's still something nice to know. For example, if I ask you to graph this, right? Then can you tell, for example, just for fun, okay? Uh, as X goes to positive infinity, what is the value of FX approaching? As it goes to positive infinity or goes to negative infinity? The answer is neither one. It actually goes to five, right? As X approaching infinity, the value of Y already five all the way. So very, very far to the right, it's constant function. You see? Uh, that's for this uh, test. I finished it in full. I think no more questions from here. Okay. Let me go on to fall 17. <clears throat> fall 17. Let me change this to is done on the 10th. Okay, so that for those people who watch the recording, uh, they look at the notation, oh, the, uh, the one in purple is done uh, on the 10th. So then go to the lecture video. Can I ask you to do this number three, the difference quotient again? Difference quotient is a question you always see in my test one. Okay, you always see that. The thing is, do you know how to deal with that? Okay. Now for this question, however, I do not recommend you to foil the denominator. So F, I mean uh, the denominator for F of X plus H. This is three over X plus H squared. And just leave it like that, don't foil it. 
Okay, now what is the reason? Because when we work on the difference quotient, you will get f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now then, how to simplify that? And you need to think how to simplify. We will multiply by the LCD, which is x squared times x plus x squared x squared times x plus h squared. Okay, now let me give you maybe two minutes to proceed from there. I don't think you can finish in two minutes. Okay, but you get the main uh, work already done in two minutes. Okay, we will come back at 11, 21, maybe 22. Okay, try it, try it, please. Let me, uh, let me grab some drink. Okay, so what happened to the top left? You get 3x, 3x squared. In the right hand side, we have 3 times x plus h squared over h times x squared times x plus h squared. Now, of course, if you replace h by 0, then you will get 3x squared minus 3x squared over uh, 0 times something that's still 0 over 0. So you know that's not where you can stop. Okay, then we need to simplify. <clears throat> right, we need to simplify. Uh, I strongly recommend you to uh, factor a 3 first on the top. But if you don't, if you don't factor a 3, so, so what I have in mind is this. So you factor a three, right? So it looks like this. Right, that's what happened on the top. And then you see in the grouping there, it's actually difference of squares. So it looks like X plus blah, X minus blah. Now that's if you happen to have uh, that maturity to go that route okay now otherwise then uh, what you can do is you foil the second term so that's 3 minus x squared plus 2hx plus h squared over hx squared x plus h squared okay let me erase that so that students who don't watch this lecture will not get confused with that. Okay, but that's actually one option. Okay, uh, in my opinion, if you can do it that way, then you can finish this a lot faster. <clears throat> now then go on, this is 3x squared minus 3x squared minus 6hx minus 3h squared over hx squared x plus h squared. Cancel the 3x squared, I get negative 6xh minus 3h squared over h x squared x plus h squared. Now then I factor the negative, uh, I factor the negative h on the top. Actually, I can factor negative 3h from the top. Negative 3h from the top, I get 2 plus h over this guy. And then cancel the h. Let me continue here. I get negative of 3 times 2 plus h over x squared x plus h squared <clears throat> okay let me see if i can move this up a little bit uh, you know what let me get rid of this guy let me get rid of this guy and then i move this up mm -mm.
Good. Way too high. Like that. <coughs> now let me move a little bit more. I move this here so that when I uh, save it later on, it looks better. Readable. <clears throat> okay, now that's for number three from this test. Am I recording this? Yes, I'm recording this. <clears throat> number four, we'll find the domain and solve for that. We did that before. How about number five? Oh, this again, even an odd function. You notice that I always ask that question, right? Even an odd function. Can you do that? Or you do you think can do that on your own? If you can, if you think you can do it on your own, then I would just go ahead and finish it. I do it. I think you can do it. Okay, so to know if the function is even or odd, I do f negative x. and then simplify. And notice that the denominator already the same, the numerator is the opposite. So I will factor the negative from the top. I need more space. So 4x cubed minus 8x over 7x squared plus x to the fourth. But that is negative of fx. Okay, so f negative x is now equals to negative fx. Therefore, fx is odd. Okay, and because fx is odd, then the function, it has, the graph has origin symmetry. <clears throat> okay. Let's go on to the next question, number six. <clears throat> oh, okay, this one, we did a similar one earlier, right? Uh, let that function, this function and find the range. Okay, then we saw that square root of blah, square root of x plus two is at least zero. And negative three square root of blah, multiply both sides by negative three, but we reverse the inequality sign, right? So four minus three square root of blah should be less than if equals to if you add four to both sides, right? In other words, then the range is now from negative infinity up to four. Okay, the vertex is uh, negative two comma four. That one is easy. Okay, two to the left, upside down, up four. Okay, now let's see what's the graph look like. Okay, two to the left, let me write the full function down here. That's four minus four minus three square root of x plus two. Is it right? Uh huh. That's the, the function. So move two units to the left, right? Supposed to look like this. 
supposed to look like this. But because of the negative three, you flip that upside down, right? So it's square root of x, move two units to the left, make it upside down, and then stretch vertically by factor of three, right? So uh, basically, uh, once you flip that upside down, that's what it's supposed to look like. But you stretch that at a factor of three. So instead of going down one, right one, you go down three, right one. <clears throat> okay. So the graph later on will look like approximately like that. Now then we will move up four. So the vertex is now negative two comma four. Now let's do those motion to find the rest of the coordinates. Okay, down three, supposed to go down one, right one, but now we go down three, right one. Go down two becomes go down six, right four. Okay, go down three, supposed to go to the right nine. Now we go down nine, go to the right nine. So the graph looks like this. Yeah, for the last coordinate here, you don't need that, but the one inside the grids, inside the given space, the one inside given, uh, inside the, the coordinate system that I give you, then you need to put the bubble, okay? <clears throat> As for more details, you see the X intercept, is negative two over nine. That's slightly to the left of that origin. Okay, and then the y-intercept is zero comma four minus three radical two. We can't really tell if that's positive or negative, right? I, I mean, I don't know if that's positive or negative. Okay, so, but from here, apparently that's negative. Then you can use your calculator later on. You can use your calculator to compute what is the approximate value of that in decimal? Okay, so four minus three square root of two, it's negative 0 0.2 something. It's so small such that it's so hard to put in graph accurately though. <clears throat> okay, that's why we will not use those X and Y intercept as part of the graphing guides here. It's just part of the confirming, but we don't use that as a guide we still need to graph, use this to help. <clears throat> okay, those are the important coordinates that I bubble. Let's go on to the next question. Page three, is there anything else that we should do? Oh, number seven, <clears throat> an absolute function. What is the domain of an absolute function? The domain of absolute function is all real numbers. So however you move left, right, up, down, it will also be all real numbers. Either you write that capital R with double vertical line or uh, negative infinity to infinity. <clears throat> okay, now how about the range of this function? Well, absolute of anything will always be at least zero multiplied by two will still at least zero, multiply both sides by two, right? Now subtracting both sides by two, if you subtract by two, then the other side must be uh, negative two. From there we see that the range must be from negative two to infinity. The vertex is, uh, what we see here is, you move three units to the right, and then two units down, right? The stretch by two will not change the vertex. So the vertex is three comma negative two. Okay, now how do we graph that? Three comma negative two, Three comma negative two is three comma negative two is here. Okay, and then from that vertex, 
It's supposed to be when I go left, right one, I go up one. So the graph supposed to look like this. The graph supposed to look like this. But remember we stretched that by factor of two, right? So instead of going up one, when you move left, right one unit, we go up one, we go up two instead. Left, right two units, supposed to go up two, multiply by two becomes four. Left, right three units, supposed to go up three, multiply by two, go up six. So that's what the graph look like. If you have ruler, of course, that's better, right? Okay, but as long as you bubble it, then I know you know. Uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to do, draw it so accurate though. Okay, but if you bubble it, then I know this graph pass through or contains what important coordinates. <clears throat> That's for page three of this uh, test. Let's see the rest. Number 10 is done, 12, 11 is done, 13 is done. The last page. Oh, the piecewise defined function. Oh, this one is good. Is that all? Oh, so that's the last question for this section. Let me enlarge that a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so the first piece, the first piece is less than negative one. Less than negative one. Less than negative one. So this is negative one, anything to the left. Okay, how to graph that though? Hmm. How to graph that one? Well, square root of x, square root of x plus three means you move three to the left, <clears throat> but then replacing x by negative x, that gives us square root of three minus x will reflect with respect to the y-axis. Oh, wow. This one is not easy to graph. So the vertex of this yellow part is 3 comma 0, up 1, left 1, up 2, left 4, up 3, left 9, So the graph will supposed to look like this. The graph supposed to look like this. However, we just take the, the part that is to the left of x equals to one, to the left of x equals to one. So I need to delete this part here. Yeah, I just use that to help me guide, uh, help guiding me in graphing. <clears throat> Okay, now then let's see the second piece. The second piece is from negative one, including negative one up to two, but not including two. And the graph there is x squared. Oh, x squared is easy to graph. The graph of x squared is have vertex zero, zero, right? Left, right one units, I go up one. Left, right, two units, I go up four. But this one here, I need to use open circle. So that's what the graph look like. <clears throat> and then when X is at least two, so starting from two to infinity, we will use absolute of negative x minus three. Hmm. Absolute of x looks like this. Absolute of x minus three means I shift to the right three units. And then the opposite of that, oops, too far to the look below. My bad, absolute of x minus three. So, negative of absolute of x minus three. So that's upside down. But the vertex is three comma zero. So it's like this. Okay. 
that's what the function look like. Okay, if you want to do the highlight, go ahead, but uh, it's supposed to be without those highlight though, supposed to be without those highlight. Okay, the graph supposed to look like this. Okay, that's what the graph supposed to look like. Okay, now that's a uh, fall 17 test. Let's take a look on for uh, spring 19 test one. Uh, remember in spring 19, I said in my explanation, I gave six tests instead. So in spring 19, uh, in spring 19, test one and part of test two, is the material of your spring 21 test one. Okay, because they have six tests there. They have everyday class, everyday one hour, 10 minutes uh, at West LA College. Okay, uh, so I think the test one, we did most of that already. I don't think I left anything behind, but let's take a look. Let's take a look. Is there anything I left last time that I didn't do yet? Oh, this one here, number six. Let the graph be reflected with respect to origin. Find the equation. Well, huh, that one is actually on the easy side. Okay. If we reflect with respect to the origin, then x becomes negative x y becomes negative y, okay? So the equation, that's what you will do to the equation. So replace x by negative x, replace y by negative y, and of course simplify, okay? That's negative three x plus four y squared equals to five, that's the end of story. Now to confirm if that's really uh, the the reflection. Let's. You don't have this graph in softwares, I know, but uh, let's check. Let's check if what we get is really the reflection. Okay, we get three x plus. Is it four y squared? Equals to five. Mm hmm. That's the graph. That's what the graph look like. Now, if you reflect this with respect to origin, if you reflect this with respect to origin, then it will turn around, right? It'll be like that. Okay, so when I reflect that with respect to the origin, the X becomes negative X. The y becomes negative y, but because y squared, uh, uh, the negative cancels equals to five. See that? Okay. Imagine if you rotate this purple parabola 180 degrees around the origin. And then you will get the red one. Okay, now that's for uh, this question, just to confirm. That's just to confirm. Okay. Let's see more. Is there anything I left behind last time? It's page three. I think we are done even with page four. Yeah, we are done with page four. Now for the next five minutes, let's see in their test two, okay, the question that is in your test one. So the one I mark in purple here will be in your test two instead, okay? The one I mark in other color will be in your test one. Now let's do this again. So the graphing quadratic function 
and all the details from there is uh, has always been in my test one. Okay, it's either quadratic, absolute value, radical. Okay, I don't really ask the graph of x cubed. I don't really ask the graph of uh, what's that one over x. Okay, but so quadratic, absolute value, radical, uh, two of those three will be in my test. Okay, now how about axis of symmetry here? X equals to negative B over two A. That's three over negative one, which is negative three, but emphasize that it is equation of a vertical line. Okay, now how about the vertex? I think negative three is a nice number. So let me just plot that into the function negative one half times negative three squared minus three times negative three minus one half. That's negative nine over two plus nine minus one half. Oh, negative nine half minus one half is negative 10 half, which is negative five. So this is equals to four. So the vertex is negative three comma four. Okay, how about the range? We know the parabola is upside down because the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, so we have maximum, right? Four is the maximum that we get from the Y component of the vertex. So the range will be from negative infinity up to four. And how about the standard form? Well, we have the vertex already. So this is fx equals to dA times x minus h squared plus k. How about the graph negative three comma four? Let's see negative three comma four, it's here. And the leading question is negative one half, left, right, one, go down one half, left, right, two, go down two, left, right, three, go down four and a half. Right, remember? Left, right, three is supposed to go up and go up nine, but because of negative one half, we go down four and a half. Left, right, four, go down eight. So this will be the graph. Okay, we have axis of symmetry. Let me bubble it thicker. Okay, let's go on further. Oh, that one, yeah, we already have the graph, so we can use that graph to solve that inequality. Oh, how do we graph these? Uh, describe in words transformation in fourth to uh, to sketch the graph of function from basic function y equals to square root of x. Step one, I will get uh, square root of x plus four. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, step one, move to the left. So if I move to the left, four to the left, I get square root of four X plus four. Now, and then reflect with respect to Y axis. That's basically replacing the X by negative X, right? That's square root of four minus X and then <clears throat> reflect with respect to 
x-axis, that is negative square root of 4 minus x, uh, stretch vertically by 2, that gives us negative 2 square root of 4 minus x, and then we move up 6 units. That's how we get six minus two square root of four minus x. That's what we want. Now, how about the domain? That's four minus x should be greater or equals to zero means four is greater or equals to x. So the domain is negative infinity up to four. <clears throat> the range will be up to six. Right, negative infinity up to six because we flip that upside down. Okay, the y intercept is done. How about x intercept? Uh, zero equals to six minus two square root of four minus x. We'll solve this. I kind of rush a little bit because of time. And square both sides. So x equals to 9 minus 4. Actually, no, 4 minus 9. That's negative 5. So the x-intercept is negative 5, comma, 0. I believe the one after this is graphing. The vertex is 4, comma, 6. It's here. That's 4 comma 6. And then the y-intercept is 0, 2. X-intercept, negative 5 comma 0. Okay, and this is the function. So because of that negative 2 means I flip upside down and then instead of one unit down, I go two units down to go up one. Two units down becomes four units down to go to the left four and then six unit down to go to the left nine. Okay, that's actually the, all the coordinates that I can get. Okay, let's see if there's any more questions. Oh, different question here. Uh, we did a lot of different question already. So I don't think I want to do that one anymore. Uh, even function, odd function, see, it always shows up, huh? Okay. Uh, and then... Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Yeah, I will continue working on this number four and five sim for, uh, for complicity. But uh, in one minute, we are done with this class. So let me just go ahead, uh, work this out uh, really fast. So difference quotient of this function will be two over x plus h squared minus two over x squared over h. Multiply the top and the bottom by the LCD to get rid of the complex fractions. Then I get on the top left, 2x squared minus top right, 2 times x plus h squared over h times x squared, x plus h squared. Now then I will FOIL the second term on the top. You still need to copy the denominator as is though. Okay, don't just say, oh, it's dot, 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 Thomas, you know what I mean. No, I don't. So 2x squared minus 2x squared minus 4hx minus 2h squared over h x squared x plus h squared. Cancel 2x squared, negative 4hx minus 2h squared. It's way too long. Uh, 
go for h x squared x plus h squared. I will factor negative 2h on the top. Cancel the h, we get negative of 2, 2x plus h over x squared, x plus h squared. The last one, determine if this function is, is even or odd, replace x by negative x. Simplify. The denominator already the same. The numerator is the opposite. So let me take uh, factor that negative out on from the top. Okay, such that we can now say that f negative x is equal to negative fx. Therefore, the function is, is odd again, right? It's odd. If that's equals to fx only instead of negative fx, if it is f negative x equals to fx only, then that will be even function. But with that, opposite of fx, uh, it makes it odd function. If it is an odd function, then it will have, it has, the graph has origin symmetry. Okay, so I'm done with all the material for your test one. You have two weekends to study for your test one. Okay, see you then on Monday for this class. Thank you.